Science Tans, what's going on? It's Mr. Walton. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Uh, today we're going to be talking about forces, and forces were kind of originally first studied by a Sir Isaac Newton. Now you're probably familiar with Sir Isaac Newton. He was the, uh, he was the guy who uh, first hypothesized this relationship about gravity, and of course gravity exerts a force on everything. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, so he lived from 1642 to 1727, studied the relationship between force, oh, that was terrible, force, and acceleration. And the idea is that when you apply a force onto an object, it will accelerate. Now, I want to be very specific here. It's not just when you apply a force it's because objects can feel objects can feel many forces at one given time so for example <clears throat> let's say there was you know an object there was a doll or something like that and you were pulling on it in one direction and somebody else is pulling on it in another direction if you were pulling on it with equal forces if F1 and F2 were the exact same thing, then if you're pulling on them in totally, completely opposite directions, then the, the object, the doll in this case, isn't going to be going anywhere. And so when we say force, we really, honestly, we really mean kind of the net force. And the net force is all of the forces... on an object combined together. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about those uh, here in a little bit. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> so what is a force? A force is a push or a pull on an object. And so you can exert a force on an object simply by pushing or pulling. Now, uh, typically we see, you know, like here we've got a pool cue and it's hitting a billiard ball. And so that's, you know, that's a push. Uh, here we've got a rotational force. So that's like a torque. Okay. It's, we're not going to talk a whole lot about that, but it's one version of a force. And here we've got a pull. Now keep in mind, remember what I said is the net force, right? So when, it, when somebody's pulling up on a basketball, yeah, you're pulling up on it, but gravity's pulling down. And so if you're exerting the exact same force, then the ball won't accelerate at all, either up or down. So it'll if it was if it was, you know, traveling at a certain speed, then it'll stay traveling at that certain speed. If it was not moving at all, then it'll stay not moving at all. It's not going to accelerate one way or the other, okay? So we we're really kind of focusing on net force, even though we're not explicitly talking about it. So Newton came up with uh, three laws, and we're going to talk kind of um, weirdly enough about the second law today. And Newton's second law states that the acceleration of an object so if an object wants to accelerate is proportional to the force exerted on that object and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And so we're going to deal with uh, an acceleration equation here, and we're going to talk about acceleration in terms of force. But just keep in mind, we're going to rearrange it here in a second. You're going to see the rearranged version of that equation a lot more often, okay? So the acceleration equation, the acceleration equation that we're going to deal with right now, it depends on the mass of the object, and it also depends on the force, the net force, exerted on that object, right? 
Okay, so there's uh, there's an equation that we're going to be dealing with, and it's that the acceleration of an object is uh, proportional to the force, the net force, right? The, all the forces added up. So the force exerted on the object and the mass of that object. And so this is one version of the equation that you might see or you might want to use. Now, it's typically... It's typically written in a very different way, okay? So what we can do is we can solve for the net force on that object. If we want F net, if we want the force on the object, that means we want to get rid of the mass. If we want to get rid of the mass, we just bring it up here. And so kind of the second version of the equation is F net is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. And so if you apply a certain force, then that mass will accelerate at a certain rate, okay? So that's those are kind of the first two versions of the equation. And then the third version of the equation, so we have, we have one solving for A, we have one solving for F net. Now let's solve one for M. If I want M by itself, I'll divide by A. So divide by A, divide by A. A swings down here, so M is F net divided by A. Perfect, so those are kind of the three equations. They're all the same equation, but they're the three equations that we would use, okay? So you're gonna see uh, the second version of the equation. I'm just gonna erase a little bit of this. You're gonna see the second version of the equation uh, in your data booklet on page five. Now let's just take a look at this a little bit more. So force, well, okay, you don't know what a force is measured and what the units of a force is, but it's measured in newtons, okay? And we say N, capital N for that. Mass is gonna be measured, the, the system international unit, the SI unit for mass is kilograms. And then acceleration, you should be relatively familiar with this is meters per second squared. That's the, those are the units for this thing. So let's try and figure out, let's try and figure out what the fundamental units of a Newton are made of. So we're gonna use that equation. We're gonna use equation number two, F net equals M times A, and we're gonna figure out what the fundamental units are. Because a Newton, a Newton is kind of like a made up unit, okay? It's almost like a, it's like a foot. A foot isn't a ma isn't like a proper unit. It's not an SI unit. It's a made up unit. Okay. Um, now we're gonna figure out what a newton is by simply plugging in the units for these other two things. So we're gonna figure out what a newton is. We already know it's gonna be n, but we're just gonna plug in um, the units for these things and figure out what it is. So mass is measured in kilograms. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. And so that means a Newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. That's what a Newton is measured in. So it's, it's one kilogram times one meter per second squared. Basically what it means, okay, is that one Newton is the force required to accelerate one kilogram at a rate of a one meter per second squared. That's, that's really what it means. So one Newton is the force required to accelerate one kilogram at a rate of one meter per second squared. If you had a two kilogram object, then you would need two Newtons. If you wanted to accelerate it at two meters per second squared, you would need two Newtons, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's, let's just talk a little bit more about like a, a proper force and kind of see it in action a little bit. So we've got a, a couple examples here. So... Um, we've got a hand 
uh, moving a brick. It's just sliding a brick across across a, like a counter or a floor or something like that. And so uh, the force of the hand accelerates the brick at a very specific rate, okay? Now, if we use the exact same force, force if we pushed the, with the exact same force on two bricks stacked on, stacked on top of each other, because there's this has twice the mass that has, the acceleration is going to be half. This is one half times the acceleration. So it's it's going to accelerate at half of the rate as as just one brick. And um, similarly, if you push on three bricks, it's going to accelerate at a rate of a third times the rate of acceleration. Now another way to think about this is if you push on that first brick, right, it'll accelerate at a very specific rate. But if you use twice the force, that brick will accelerate at twice the rate. And we, <clears throat> we see one of these situations in action in a video that I asked you to watch on Friday. And so we're going to go ahead and skip uh, to one of those videos and we're going to go ahead and check it out. So here we've got an astronaut in space and there's a brass ball and a ball made of wood. And um, all he did was he, he blew on those two objects. Now we've got three balls, a ping pong ball, a wooden ball, and a brass ball. Now when we look at these objects, they obviously have different masses. The brass ball, the brass ball here is going to be the heaviest object. The wooden ball is going to be the next heaviest, and the ping pong ball is going to be the lightest. And so what's happening here, what's happening here is that these objects are accelerating at, at a rate inversely proportional to their mass. The heavier these objects are, the slower they're accelerating. You can see that ping pong ball absolutely scream out of there at a really fast rate, but that, that, uh, that brass ball isn't, right? So uh, what's happening is all three of those balls are feeling the exact same force, but because they have different masses, they're accelerating at different rates. And so we can, we can draw an analogy to the bricks here. And so because the bricks have different masses, that equals different rates of acceleration. So let's use these formulas in a couple different examples. And then what I want you to do is I've got four questions that I would like you to complete and you can just check the notes for uh, the answer key when you're done. So we got three uh, examples here. As always, what I like you to do, and this is just me, what I like you to do uh, whenever we're doing kind of a calculation question. So what force, squiggly line, so it's looking for the force would be required to accelerate a 0 .40, 0 0 0.040 kilogram golf ball. So that that's telling me that that's the mass there. So the mass 0 0.040 kilograms at a rate of 1,000 meters per second squared. And so the rate of acceleration is, we're going to say positive 1,000 meters per second squared. So, okay, this is hopefully fairly straightforward. What you would do is you would go into your data booklet and you would say, okay, what equation has F, M, and A all together? And you would write, oh, okay, F equals M, A. And so if I want the force, remember the net force, it's the mass multiplied by the rate of acceleration. And so the net force should have been net force all the way, but so the net force that you would require in order to accelerate this golf ball at a rate of positive 1,000 meters per second squared. So 1,000 meters per second times 0 0.040 kilograms is 
positive 40 newtons. And remember, newtons is kilogram meters per second squared. And so let's take a look at this. How many significant digits do I need? Well, I've got two significant digits. Why is that two significant digits? I see four digits here. I see, I see a zero, a zero, a four, and a zero. Well, remember, digits are only significant once you've reached your first non-zero integer or a number or a, or a decimal place. So zero, not significant. Zero, not significant. But four and anything after that, significant. So two digits multiplied by four significant digits. So we're going to take the lowest number. We got two significant digits. Perfect. We're going to need a rate of 40 newtons. Moving on, uh, second equation or second example, you pull on a 6.5 kilogram sled with a force of 14.2 newtons. Calculate the sled's acceleration. Squiggly line. So you pull on a 6.5 kilogram sled, so that's the mass with a force of 14.2 newtons. Calculate the sled's acceleration, question mark. Perfect. Well, we'll start off with our original equation. And we say, okay, if we want acceleration, that's what it's saying we want, right? Calculate the sled's acceleration. If we want A all by itself, how do we get A all by itself? Well, we're going to have to do the opposite operation of what's currently happening. So it's A times M, so we got to divide by M, divide by M. So our equation is A equals F over M. Perfect. There we go. So 14.2 newtons divided by 6.5 kilograms. is 2.1846 blah 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 meters per second squared so we'll take this and we're going to round it to the appropriate number of significant digits i got three on top two on the bottom so i got to round to two significant digits the two's good the one is the one good take a second and think is that one okay or should we round it up or down well the next digit is an eight and because it's a five or higher, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's an eight. We're going to round it up. So our actual rate of acceleration, including the amount of precision, is 2.2 .2 meters per second squared. Perfect. There we go. So the third example, last example that we're going to go through here in this video, a hockey puck sits on the ice. A player strikes it with her stick, and it, oh my goodness, it, Walton, whatever, that's okay. And it experiences a force of 22 newtons for a time of 0 0.35 seconds. If its mass is 0 0.25 kilograms, calculate the puck's final velocity after the, the whatever, after the shot. Sorry about that. Okay, squiggly line. Uh, a player strikes it with her stick and it experiences a force. Force equals positive 22.0 newtons for a time delta t of 0 0.35 seconds. If its mass is 0 0.25 kilograms, I have no idea if that's correct. I have no idea if that's how heavy a or how massive a hockey puck should be. But that's what we're rolling with. Okay, calculate the puck's final velocity. So we want VF, question mark. Here's our problem. We've got a problem. We want VF. We want VF. And if we take a look at our data booklet, I'm just going to pull up our data booklet here. We want VF. And the only equation that I see that has like final velocity in it or something like that, well, the first two have velocity in it, right? Or speed and velocity, whichever way you want to look at it. These ones have velocity in it. But the problem with that is, is these first two equations, they only deal with uniform motion. 
are we dealing with an object that's going at the same speed the whole time? No, we're not. This thing's accelerating, right? It's, it's sitting on the puck motionless, and then you hit it, and it starts going a specific speed. So it uh, starts picking up its velocity. So the, we can't use these first two because those are only for uniform motion. So I see VF in this formula here. So what are all the things that I need to get VF by itself? I need VI. Do you have the initial velocity of that puck sitting on the ice? Yeah, you do. It's zero. Okay, do you have delta T? Let's take a look. Do we have delta T here? Yeah, we have delta T. Absolutely. And then finally, do you have acceleration? No, we don't have acceleration. This is our first two-step problem. This is the very first two-step problem that we'll be doing this semester. And we'll do a few more later. But what's going to happen is is that we will use the acceleration formula, but first we have to find acceleration. How are we gonna find acceleration? Well, we have the net force and the mass, so we can get acceleration from this formula. So that's our first step, okay? Step one, find acceleration. Then step two, using acceleration, find the final velocity. That's what we got to do. So let's try this out. So step number one. So we want to rearrange F equals MA to get acceleration by itself. So I'm going to divide by M, divide by M. So acceleration is F over M. So I'm going to take that 22 newtons and I'm going to divide it by 0 0.25 kilograms and I'm going to get my rate of acceleration is going to be 88 uh, meters per second squared positive perfect so let's take it the let's uh, take a second to think about this I know that I, I, I got like a pretty nice number. This has no kind of decimal places or anything like that on this number. But we should never round, never, ever, ever, ever round until you're done the actual question. Okay? Are we done the actual question? No. So just leave exactly whatever you see here. If it came out to a decimal with nine decimal places, we just leave it that way. Okay? So that's step one. Let's do step two. Remember, step two was now that I have the rate of acceleration, we can use that to get the final velocity. Okay, so let's try this. Acceleration is VF minus VI over delta T. And immediately, you can cross off VI. Why? Why can you cross off VI? Yeah, the puck is just sitting on the ice. It's not doing anything. It's not in motion. So we're going to get rid of VI, okay? So now let's get VF all by itself. How do we get VF all by itself? You multiply by delta T, multiply by delta T. So we got VF equals a delta t and we would have had um, if we would have properly rearranged we would have had plus because we would have added vi to both sides we would have had plus vi but we don't so whatever it's fine so vf is that positive 88 meters per second squared and we're multiplying by the amount of time, 0 0.35 seconds. So 88 times 0 0.35 is 30.8 meters per second, and it's positive. That's the final velocity. Ooh, but not quite. Not quite. 
because when we do this, okay, this was, so this was three digits divided by two digits. So this answer should have had two digits, but we didn't want to round yet. So then we carry it through two digits times two digits. This answer has got to have two digits in it. So what's our actual final answer? Well, it's these two digits rounded up, of course. So 31, positive 31 meters per second. That's going to be our final velocity. So if a hockey, hockey player strikes uh, a puck with a force of 22 newtons for a time of 0.35 seconds, if it's got a mass of 0.25 kilograms, then that thing is going to be rocketing off at a velocity of 31 meters per second, which is about, it's approximately 100 kilometers an hour. So just to give you a, a reference for that. So what I want you to do, I would like you to answer these four questions, okay? Uh, three of them, I would say, are pretty easy, but one of them is going to be pretty difficult, okay? But we went through an example very much like that very difficult question. We just went through an example of that. So I, I have faith that you can do that. So we got four questions here, and I would like you, I would like you to attempt them. Take a look at the notes for the key, uh, but also make sure you've handed in the assignment that I assigned Thursday and Friday. Uh, it's due by the end of the day today. So let me know if you have if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great day. I'll see you later, Science Tens.